In the squared circle of the wrestling ring, there unfolds many a display of wild fiction designed to delight and entertain masses of sweaty neckbeard fanboys who take a bunch of men play fighting way too seriously. But as the cliche goes, truth is stranger than fiction. The real life stories of some of wrestling's biggest superstars of yore are far more dramatic and insane than anything crafted by the feeble imagination of Vince McMahon. Tonight, the worst fates of wrestlers get deep, fat, fried. Paul's anti-Semitic. Just throwing that out there. What? Oh, Excuse sorry. you? I, are we recording right now? Are we recording right now? I didn't know we were recording right yeah. now. Yeah. What? Paul's, sorry. uh... Oh, sorry. Excuse Paul's you? A, yeah, Paul, you're Paul. Kayfabe! <laughs> Just joking. What? Paul, you'll you call it. What? Chaz, Paul's, uh... You're a Chazza, Paul. Are we recording right now? Paul, you're a Chazza, Paul. Paul, you're a Chazza, Paul. Paul, you're a Chazza, Paul. Because I've sat here a million times and watched Paul drool over Jude Law, just like, oh, Jude. Hey, Jude. Practically every time the fucking cameras are off. Like, we wrap up a show, Paul's like, hey, guys, you see the latest pictures of Jude? What? I'm like, Paul, come on. Okay, we know you love Jude, but that's, Jude. you know. Jude, I love Jude. Jude. I fucking happen to let Pat. Jude. I just mentioned once, like, yeah, Jeff Goldblum's pretty sexy. And Paul's like, <laughs> not. He's not my type. I don't, I don't think he's all that hot. He's I mean, I'm fucking not gorgeously I, hot, Paul. I'm not Especially saying Especially around the Jurassic Park look era. Look at his smoldering eyes, Paul. Look at him. He's fucking fabulous, all right? Look at him in the fly, too. I don't know. I mean, Jesus Christ. He turns I mean, you into ever a seen hideous monster. That end, I'm not saying by the time he's totally into that, but like those early fly stages, you know? When he's just doing push-ups, like pull-ups like crazy and shit. Oh, look, I feel better than I felt my life. It's amazing. I mean, see, like, this is just you it's having a trouble fly. with me not being into some dude that you're into. I'm, and not, trying saying, to come up. I'm not saying you got to be into it, but, you know, I don't fucking, when you bring up Jude Law, I'm not like, <laughs> ugh. That's because yeah. you realize you can't be, uh, because Jude is fucking hot, indisputably. Indisputably fucking hot. Hey, you know what? Hot. <coughs> Jude Law at this point it looks put, like a TJ, fucking you know high school English teacher. Put a right? picture of Jude Law up, TJ. Put a picture of Jude Law up because I want people to vote. Jude well, is not you Law. Gotta put a, you, you can't put a, yeah, like a recent it. picture yep. of Jude up I, and you then. Know what? You know what, Paul? Jude shirtless. Jude sex shirtless. Off, sex off between Jude Law and Jeff Goldblum. Fucking that's my next episode. You fucking. Oh, you pull, shit. You pull the Jude Law research. I'll pull the Jeff Goldblum research. We'll fucking do it. All right. Well, the the showdown the, with, battle dude, of the Titans. With, with pathetic heterosexual Scotty is the fucking judge. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Dude, if you call down the thunder, TJ, you reap the whirlwind. I'm just warning you, man. So check this out. You guys, uh, I was watching wrestling. These guys were super big when I was watching. Right? I'm so amore. Yeah, yeah, I know. This I dude, know they, they always had this super long intro. They'd p come out. It was uh, Enzo, Cass, <laughs> and uh, uh, Car Carmella. Yeah, I think she's the right. hot Carmella. chick. They had this hot chick with big old titties named Carmella. I think I got a picture of her somewhere in this shit. 
And uh, they'd always come out to this big, long intro. Uh, Enzo is the short one with the crazy hair. And he'd be like, my name is Enzo Amore, and I am a certified G and a bona fide stud, and you can't teach that. And the audience would go, you can't teach the whole crowd. Can't teach that. And then, and he'd be like, and this right here, this is Big Cass, and he's seven feet tall. I remember and these you guys can't now. can't teach that, right? You remember rem- the little intro? Yeah. Yeah, I remember them because you did that part, because I didn't remember mm-hmm. who these guys were, but I remember their it little was intro. Yeah, okay. Big fan interaction thing. Right. And uh, they'd be, this is Carmella, she's hot as hell, and you can't teach that. Bada boom, realist guys in the room, and then Big Cass would take the mic with his lack of charisma and go, how you doing? And everyone would be like, ooh! And these guys, they were super popular for that shit. All right? <laughs> Poor Big Cass. Now, neither Cass. of these guys, yeah, I know. <laughs> neither of these guys doing shit no mo. Um, I gotta fucking pull up my shit here. Looks like my, my document somehow closed while I was fucking off doing whatever I was doing. So... Enzo Amore, big cast. Real names are Eric Ardent and William Morrissey. Uh, we're a tag team in the WWE from 2013 to 2017. You know, I'm sorry, I gotta stop you. That does not sound like yes. wrestler names, dude. Well, that's why Is they don't go. Either? That's why they don't go by that. Eric no, I know Ardent that, but I'm saying, and like, William I Morrissey. Imagine, that be a, I, what I'm saying is I don't even imagine that to be the real name of a wrestler. Is what I'm saying. Well, here. hence why they didn't go by that shit. That's why you go by Enzo Amore and Big Cass when your name is Eric on Ardent and William Morrissey because no one wants to hear that. My name is Eric Ardent and I'm a bona fide thug or whatever the fuck. Well, bullshit. that's why they didn't make it, dude. They had the wrong fucking names. Well, I'm not talking about the wrestling names. Their real names are just like, no, that doesn't work, man. In this timeline, well, it doesn't need to fucking work. No one knows that shit. It needs fucking, to fucking work, TJ. It doesn't it needs need to, to work. Fucking work. So they weren't very impressive in the ring. They never were. But no. they fucking had cool catchphrase, honor personalities, got them over with the crowd, which is way more important. If you could choose between being a great in-ring worker or being over with the crowd, definitely choose over with the crowd. Oh, they were totally over. People love this speech, dude. The little So Enzo speech. pretty much had no wrestling experience whatsoever when he joined the WWE. Uh, in fact, he previously worked as a Hooters manager, uh, a New York Jets ticket salesman, and a piano mover. Uh, Enzo was never that good in the ring. In fact, he broke his leg uh, trying to counter a wrist lock one time, uh, which I don't even know how the fuck you break your... How do you fucking do that? So here's uh, Simon Gotch. I think this dude's actually a fan of mine, or he used to be. I, I went to a show, and this was this dude, uh, he was wrestling, and as he walked by me, he's like, oh, hey, you're fucking me. He fucking stopped for a second and was like, whoa, dude. And uh, when he fucking, after they lost... Uh, as he was going by, he fucking shot me a little peace sign and shit. So this is him talking about how uh, Enzo's piece of shit. And Enzo is a fucking abortion. Damn. <laughs> okay, that was worthy of a damn. To a wrist lock? <laughs> Enzo fucking is a fucking abortion. <laughs> <laughs> damn, dude, that's a fucking calling someone an abortion. Uh, that that's I mean that, that's a real hatred. That's a deep seated hatred for somebody. Yeah, that that when he was in the wheelchair on NXT TV, that's how it happened. He broke his own leg trying to counter a wrist lock. He blamed it on the canvas being loose. Close line him. I was gonna, I was just gonna close line him. I was like, hey, can you take the inside out bump? He goes, oh yeah, bro, I can. I, I, I can take the inside out bump. Him. Didn't sound very confident. Okay, so a little while goes by. I'm like, are you sure you can take the inside out bump? Because I mean, we can just do a normal bump if you want. No, bro, I can take the inside out bump. It's okay, I can take it. Okay. Later, but- I don't know wrestling slang terminology shit, so I don't know what the inside out bump is or how it differs no, from the regular bump. But <clears throat> maybe we should just cut it. Let's just fuck it. I'll just close. I'll just fucking glom you from behind. Fuck it. You know, there's no need to. It's last show of the year. Fuck it. We don't need to do this. No, bro. I can take the bump. It's cool. I can take it. Okay. He turns around. I go to close on him. He headbutts me in my chest. Turns around and DDTs himself. <laughs> now, um, to, to give you the the full rundown on Enzo, he's. He is, well, first, I will say to his credit, he absolutely believes his own bullshit. He is 100% confident in himself to his detriment and to the detriment of others around him. Um, He's an example of someone who has no excuse to not know wrestling, but he doesn't know wrestling. To give you just a full rundown of just a few of these. Imagine how fucking dangerous that is when you're doing this fucking stage combat shit with, with somebody on a regular fucking basis if they don't know what the fuck they're doing. You know what I mean? That's just a recipe to get fucking hurt. Uh, Like, I don't mean to, like, inject it where it isn't uh, needed, but I've done some, like, semi-pro theater shit, and sets are very much the same way because there's a lot of shit 
on sets, rigs and fucking things that could fall on you and stuff that if it isn't in the right place, because actors have to move in in the dark. Mm -hmm. So there's a strict safety rules and shit. And if you don't follow it, people get hurt. Bones right. broken, decapitated, fucking. Well, imagine you know if I mean? you're supposed to do a scene with somebody. If you're doing a stage combat scene, Paul. Right. With somebody who does not know what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> right. Well, that's, like that's, that, that, you wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. Right. You, you wouldn't feel safe doing that. No. And he's trying to be nice here, Simon Gotch or whatever. That's trying to be nice with like, hey, let's just do it the easy way. So you don't you actually fucking. I don't have a chance to get hurt. You don't have a chance to get hurt. <laughs> you know. This guy, Obviously, by the way, pretty good in-ring worker from what I saw. Yeah, he, he is. I'm no yeah. expert of anything, but, you know, he was. He, you know, he claims to be a rapper, but if you ever, he's one of those guys who has to write everything out. He, he'll, he'll brag about, oh, I've got, 50 book, I've got 50 notebooks full of promos, and my reaction is you have to write down promos. You can't just talk. Like, you're talking about how you're the realest guy in the room. It's like, I, I never got to use this line, but I always had <laughs> one about how you, you talk about being the realest guy in the room. You got fake gold, fake Jordans, fake leopard print, fake hair with a fake accent. You pretend to be an Italian when you're actually German. It's like, <laughs> I guess you are the realest guy in the room. The only thing real about you is being a guy. Wow. Uh, hold on. I was just, hold on. I was soaking in that shade, dude. <laughs> it was a pretty oh, good shade. Yeah, dude. I fucking love it, man. <laughs> the only real thing about you is you're really a guy. <laughs> I'm, like, yeah, that, I'm the realest okay. guy in the room. You are a guy. I'll give you that. So that's Enzo. Um, before coming to WWE, Big Cass worked as a wrestler since 2009. He went by the name Big Bill Young, who was a cowboy character. Sounds super lame. Enzo and Cass ended up forming a tag team basically right when they got to the uh, WWE. Um, here you see them with John Cena. Oh, God. I just wanted to. Oh, God. I hate him so much, man. He's such a fucking <laughs> dork. I hate everyone in this image. Head asshole. Uh, Dude, Cena just terrible. Cass looks fucking ridiculous. Like, what is he even doing with that face? Like, it, like his face just looks like you just want to smash his face in. Yeah, they and all. Big Cass is just like the big dude. He, that, that's all. He, they all big. do look pretty fucking annoying. But I, I got to tell you, there's a special hatred I have for that Cena fuck. I don't. I really don't like him at all. Although they never won the uh, championship together, uh, they did make a big impact in WWE. They sold uh, some of the most merchandise. Uh, they teamed with John Cena, etc. So they split in 2017 for storyline reasons, and uh, things started going downhill for them pretty much as soon as they split up as a tag team. So Enzo was being pushed as a uh, single star on a 205 Live and won the Cruiserweight Championship belt, other than being kicked off of buses by the rest of the roster on road trips due to being obnoxious, he really didn't have too many problems. So he was not well-liked in the locker room. The other guys were kind of just like, eh, but his career was going okay. I mean, that in and uh, of itself is a problem, though. If you're fucking abrasive enough to where the people that you work with don't like you and hate your guts. Yeah, and they think you're an obnoxious twat well, and they just can't even stomach being around you. Well, not but that could do power when people that work for the company like what you're doing and the crowd like that would have almost given him job security. Like, oh, you suck. But, you know, hey, behind the scenes, people love you. You're a lot more likely to keep on working in that business than like, OK, the minute because, of course, he's gonna, if he has any career like fucking, you know, roadblocks, he's fucked. He's fucked. So in uh, on January 22nd, 2018, the Phoenix Police Department confirmed that Enzo was under investigation for sexual assault on a minor. On January 23rd, the next day, WWE stripped Enzo of his title and fired him from the company. Now, it is worth noting that the allegations were proven to be false. Well, so he was I, he was not actually guilty. So he kind of got a fucking good. bad bad luck on that one. Well, you know, he got there was these fucking false allegations, or at least they turned out to fucking be whatever. WWE claims he was not fired because he was under investigation. They claim he was fired because he lied to them about being under investigation. Uh, so they did not, like, rehire him once it was, like, con you know, pretty much proven that he didn't fucking do yeah, it. Yeah, he fucked up, dude. He fucked up because, you know, honestly, if that had been, if it had come out like he's actually innocent, they probably would have welcomed him back. Like, okay. But, and you know, it, it makes even it less sense, though. It probably would have also helped if he was well liked and like the fact that literally no one was willing to speak up for him because he was such an obnoxious twat that they didn't even want to be on the bus with him. Think of how stupid he is. So he actually knows he's innocent because you said that comes out he's actually didn't do this shit. Like it was like someone made it up or whatever. They I guess they, they proved beyond a reasonable doubt he was didn't do it. So like he lied about an investigation that he knew was like okay it's pretty much bullshit. I'm innocent. So that, like he's just doubly fucking stupid. So Enzo disappeared from all social media. 
uh, until May 28th, 2018, when he revealed he was beginning his new career as a rapper. Yeah, there you go. Oh, he released no. a song. He released a song called Phoenix on World Star Hip Hop. The song was a diss on the girl that accused him of rape. Uh, of course. Way to come Great out idea. swinging, bro. <laughs> yep. I don't know how much of this we can play, but I'm going to play. I'm going to play. So, I mean, whatever. If if it fucking triggers a thing, we'll just fucking. It'll, we can listen to a little bit of it and then whatever. Okay. The editor can take care the of it. The editor can fucking. It's the editor's problem from there. We are live from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, oh, by the way, um, this is uh, the cringiest thing you're ever going to see in your life. The 25th anniversary of sports entertainment. Mm, Oreo. Hey, it's me. So Paul. far, my dick is rock hard, so I don't know what you're talking about. This actually looks like the bastard offspring of me and Paul. That's true. This is me and Paul's love child. anniversary of wrestling tonight. And if you knew anything about commitment, you wouldn't be asking me to go to the store for you. Now let me... Some good acting right there. That's some good shit. do my work. Yeah, I okay. more think you know what the fuck's going on. What was the oh, last time no. you kept a two month social media sound? You think I wasn't gonna say shit? I'ma let y'all talk shit, talk shit. If I had a fuck to give, I would give it. If you don't frog, you ain't gotta leave. All you gotta do is rip it. Putting on a zero fucks giving exhibit. I got nothing to lose. Minute for minute, then a minute to win it. Sky's the limit. Sorry, officer. Gotta admit it. Yeah, I'm over the limit. Left car now with a one way ticket. I can't understand what the Ooh. fuck he's rapping, dude. <laughs> wow, this is top shelf cringe right here. <laughs> Ooh, hold me. Who told this dude he could rap, man? Nobody. Like, whoever Who told him this plan man a and fuck told him he had joke talent. On this motherfucker. How much do you have to hate someone to listen to this and be like, dude, I think it's pretty tight? You know what I mean? Like, you have to, to let really him go out there with this. How is this a diss on the lady that accused him of ra rape? Uh, I think you could get it a little more from the chorus if you can. I feel the hate on the crazy eights. Oh, uh, let's see y'all pivot. Ball my court, bounce back, ran number 24. Fuck shit footprint right off my image. Wow. I just love, cause you can let Wow. Double that sword, once I love, once I hate. Either way, I glitch. I ain't dumb. What's he gonna say? What's he gonna do? Get to that yeah, fucking chorus. Toes like a midget. Out of here, no. A couple red roses, I'm a gimmick. Yeah. Tears at the funeral. No, pause it, pause it, please, please, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. I can't, I can't watch anymore. This is fucking, this is distilled cringe, TJ. This is distilled cringe. Oh, you gotta hear this part. This is the greatest lyrics. Hold on. From the ashes like a phoenix, middle finger to the sky, gripping my consensual penis. Consensual penis, dude. My consensual penis. Grip it, my consensual penis. Dude, all the actors that used in this uh, music video, by the way, I'm reading right here, uh, all demanded uh, through this Green Actors Guild to be removed and replaced uh, with somebody else digitally. Like, de their face is deep fake to be something else. Wow. Well, you know what? Maybe you don't like his, uh, his rap, Phoenix, but maybe you'll enjoy his Christian rap, huh? No, oh, God, even worse. How can it, it get worse? worse? How can it get rap. worse from his cringe rap, dude? He went from like this really bad cringe rap to the even, the, oh, no. That's like the admission you can't rap. Can you if you become a Christian, Christian rapper, you can't rap. Too. Maybe you can, but you probably Gosh. cannot. Oh, man. I don't oh, want yeah. it. Gosh. Look how deep it is, God. dude. He's rapping for Jesus. I done lost my job. I done lost my place. Been lost in time and I've been lost in space. Lost Maybe my you should mind. Get a I done lost my man. way. Flew around the world. I done lost a whole day. Uh, stuck in the middle seat between the rock and a hard place. We done lost time, baby. I done been away. But you gotta miss birthdays if you wanna be great. And I want it in the worst. <laughs> you gotta miss birthdays if you gotta be great. <laughs> Bring out the fucking clown with the hook and have him <laughs> dance out. Yoink this motherfucker off stage. This is bullshit from top to bottom. This sucks. Ah. <sighs> 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 I want to hear the chorus. Enough time in the day. And 
rainy face. Get to the chorus. Bitch. Hail Mary full of grace. Hail Mary full of grace. Is that the chorus? I never lost my faith. Hail Mary full of grace. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> it's not even competent Christian rap, dude. What is this shit? Dude? Truth is, we follow God. We've <laughs> always been behind him. The carnival is God and may all juggalos find him. Enzo, uh, he snuck into Survivor Series in 2018. Um, he bought a ticket, snuck in wearing a disguise. He then proceeded to disrupt the event by removing his wig and causing a disturbance. Uh, he was then dragged out of the building by uh, security. See him here in his disguise. You see here the moment of revelation. He's wearing a shirt that says, I'm doing great. So people know just how well he's doing. So he came up with a uh, fucking publicity stunt. <laughs> here okay. he is doing it. He's out. Damn. Well, <laughs> they stop that. His ass down. I'll say that again. You'd think if he was a good ass wrestler, he would know how to escape that and turn that out. into a pile He's driver. Out. You know what I mean? A pile drive that security. Yeah, they didn't want to have his ass getting dragged out. He wanted that. Oh, They're dragging me out. I like this bitch here. I've been my reaction too. Yeah. <laughs> this chick like, right uh, are they booing like, him being dragged out or him disrupting the event? They're I mean, they don't like him being dragged out. I mean, he was pretty popular at this time. I think a lot of people felt really? like his dismissal was bullshit, especially when the charges were shown to be false. Um, you know, he was a pretty popular guy, but they, he apparently was they not, thought it was a work too. Yeah, he was not popular in the locker room though. I think that probably hurt him there. I think that if he had some people back there to speak up for him, maybe he would have fucking fared a little better. Man, you got to admit, this is kind of sad, dude. You show up at your old job, be like, hey, remember me? I'm doing awesome. And they're like, <laughs> security drags you away in front of a fucking crowd. I don't know. And this is Enzo runs up on 6 9 in New York. Get the strap. I think this is bullshit, but I don't know. Yeah, that's 100% bullshit. Oh, what do we get over here? Hey, you just say something about rock bottom? I ain't taking pictures today. Yeah, okay. I don't so know. It was a manufactured fuck is. fucking nonsense. Yeah. Nothing happened thing. Yeah, basically. Um. So, yeah, he did this. The only thing shit that's too. impressive about this to me is that he got 6 9 somehow to be involved in it. Um, yeah, who knows I, how he that dude pulled actually, that off. You know, say what you want about him. He makes a lot of fucking money, so... So uh, nowadays, Enzo mainly posts cringy rap and religious material on social media. So this is an example of that. You know, wake up today, sure enough, God wins. So he's like super religion, y'all. <laughs> Look at this comment. Jesus. That's it. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, Scotty. <laughs> hey, Scotty. Hey, Scotty. Hey, Scotty. Hey Scotty. It's hey like Scotty. It's like a hey, fucking Scotty. nightmare. Hey Scotty. Hey Scotty. Hey Scotty. Hey TJ. Jesus man. Da 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 na 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 na. na. Uh, <laughs> ah, you know how it goes. All right. Shit, um, God is a fiction designed to enslave and control those who can't think for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could hurt that. <sighs> I love it. A okay. real one. So that's what Enzo's up to. Let's see what Big Cass is doing these days. Huh? Big Cass suffered a knee injury that left him off TV for eight months. When he returned in April, Cass began having major issues with everyone backstage. He would show up to events intoxicated, argue with other wrestlers about politics as he is a big Trump supporter, uh, breaking down the tour bus toilet, uh, and even getting into backstage fights. Uh, one of those was over his ex-girlfriend, uh, Carmella. Seen here. Oh, shit. Uh, the couple had broken up in January and had been in a long-term relationship at a show he tried to reconcile with her backstage. Uh, when she began walking away, he grabbed her arm and angrily pulled her towards him. 
This led uh, Eric Rowan, Jimmy Uso, and Jay Uso to push him away from her and uh, get again get into it backstage, basically fucking behind the scenes brawl because he's fucking trying to manhandle his his uh, his ex. Here's those guys. Here's the guys that fucking intervened and stopped his ass. Um, however, the uh, final. <laughs> Yep, these are the white knights for you. Except for these two dudes are Samoan, so they're Samoan knights. And I think this dude just died recently. Eric, no. wasn't Eric Rowan died? Or was, no, it was the other one. No, it was, Luke it was Harper. The other guy. Yeah, it was Luke yeah, Harper Luke that Harper. died. Yeah. Um, however, the final straw for Vince McMahon was when uh, Cass went against Vince, Vince's wishes by attacking a midget during a promo <laughs> when he was not supposed to. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. <laughs> 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 you gotta be shitting me, dude. Yeah. So, um, Cass was only supposed to give the dwarf a big boot. Uh, that's it. However, when Cass heard the crowd laughing instead of booing, he attacked to him to get heat. Cass also stood on the midget's neck as well. This infuriated Vince McMahon, and he fired him on June nineteenth, twenty eighteen. Dude, that's crazy to get fucking Vince. Like, what the fuck? Do you step? You stepped on a midget's neck. You're like fucking seven feet tall. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And this is the incident that got him fucking fired, right here. I'm just gonna turn the volume off so we can just watch it. So he's, at this point, the crowd is like laughing rather than it's not getting him heat. So he's like, I better go further with this. Has he already gone farther than he was supposed to? Yeah, he was only supposed yeah. to give him the boot. So all the everything that's happening now is beyond what he was supposed to do. I mean, those fake punches, whatever. But I guess it gets worse. I mean, at this point, Vince is probably just pissed that this good dude is going off script. <laughs> yep, so this is a way of breaking up the set. It's like, yep, you're done. It's done. So uh, Enzo and Cass have appeared together in very few matches on the independent scene. Uh, they have performed at Six Flags and for various non-televised promotions. They now go by Enzo, which is spelled N-Z-O, and Kaz XL. <laughs> uh, wow. So oh, apparently, oh, big, no. yeah, Big Cass here suffered a seizure at a uh, House of Hardcore match on December 8th, 2018. And that's what we're seeing. That's what this video is of. Uh, we need help. Yes, yes. Having a seizure? Call. Having a seizure here. Need some help. So as you can imagine, this fueled uh, rumors of him becoming increasingly dependent on uh you know illegal drugs and shit uh, uh, he's yeah. already like what's already well of... known that he was he was an alcoholic and shit so oh yeah i mean like i i don't know like it looks epileptic or whatever the fuck did he have epilepsy or was this just like a detox seizure or some shit yeah it was some apparently i mean that's the Drug. rumor anyway there's no no one knows for sure you got to do some crazy uh, fucking hard drugs to end up in a seizure or come down off yes. of them hard or whatever so, the fuck to um, end up in a seizure. Yeah. Uh, Enzo and Cass have not appeared on WWE or AEW or Impact or New Japan or any other major wrestling company in a couple of years or more. They've just been totally relegated to like the independent yeah. circuit. They don't really I appear much why. at all. <laughs> but he, but the dude's okay. Apparently. I mean, they're still he's still doing stuff occasionally, but not for any major company. So they've totally fallen yeah. off the map. He's having a seizure now. It's like that. Yeah. You never want to be in a video where they're yelling that about you. Um, these guys fell off quick, dude. It usually takes wrestlers a couple of years to really fuck their lives up. But uh, Cass and Enzo, they just wasted no time. They got right on it. Like, let's go to fuck up status immediately. And uh, honestly, it looks like Enzo, as talentless as he is, is doing a little bit better than Cass. Well, these guys are both doing swimmingly well compared to our next uh, our next wrestler. <laughs> This is Alberto Del Rio. He was a wrestler who was uh, on and off with the WWE for many years. He worked for the company from uh, 2009 to 2014, then from 2015 to 2016. 
During his time with WWE, Alberto Del Rio was a four-time WWE champion, a two-time United States champion, a Royal Rumble, Rumble winner, and a Money in the Bank winner. So this guy was at the pretty much at the top of the fucking... <clears throat> yeah, he was pushed. Yeah, he was pushed hard. Uh, he was a top-tier fucking guy in the company, major star, major drawing power. Um, he's worked for several companies other than WWE. He's worked for um, Impact, for Lucha Underground, for Ring of Honor. Doesn't seem to stay in one place for very long. Uh, he's known for being very contentious backstage and for getting into fights, uh, you know, outside of the ring. Um, here is a here's him doing a promo for SmackDown. Um, we won't watch the whole thing. We'll get kind of a taste of the character he's playing here. <laughs> My name is Alberto Del Rio. Soy un hombre iluminado. As people, we want things. We want the nice house, the great job, the unattainable mate. Deep down, you all have the power to get these things. <laughs> this is weird. Well, it's like okay. self self-help oh, kind of shit going on i don't know um so in uh 2017 in austria del rio and his brother el hijo de dos caras i can't pronounce fucking spanish shit i'm so sorry uh beat up an australian man at a bar uh, they beat him so bad he required a trip to the hospital. The brothers were questioned at the local police station where they implicated each other and began brawling inside the police station. <laughs> the brothers beat each other so badly the police had to clean and paint the walls due to the blood stains. Uh, so <laughs> they beat the shit out of a dude at a bar and then they turn on each other in the police station and fucking start brawling in the police station to the point where the walls need to be repainted because the blood. Uh, despite his many brawls, Del Rio's biggest crimes are his abuse against women. <coughs> Wonderful. Del Rio uh, began dating professional wrestler Paige in May of 2016. They uh, began engaged in, they became engaged in uh, 2016, later split in 2017. Paige's brother apparently uh, flew over from the U.S. Uh, to the U.S. from the U.K. to have a chat with Del Rio about the way he was treating his, his sister. Uh, they got rough with Del Rio and even pulled a knife on him. Uh, Paige didn't leave him until long after that particular incident. Um, here's an arg here's some uh, argument uh, audio from an um, audio from an uh, argument they had at an airport via TMZ. Wow. Here, that's not good. That's not good so, let's, let's do it. You are pressing charges against yourself? What the? I don't even get it. This dude's nuts. Sounds like a happy relationship. Don't follow her. I'm a huge fan, by the way. What the fuck? No one cares that you're a huge fan in, in a moment like that. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. So who the fuck is the dude that's like eating peanuts or something in the front of this fucking audio? Dude recording this shit. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I know, right? Like, what the fuck is this peanut shit? Uh, yeah, he left finally for the last time in uh, 2016. Oh, okay. So that's th this is a year outside of that shit. So, so he's this is the a little bit after that. Yeah. Paige, uh, so Paige has accused Del Rio of physically assaulting her almost every day of their relationship. It's like it's up to six, seven hours a day. You're literally trapped in a certain room and getting your ass beat every couple of minutes. You know what I mean? Paige said, that's what she said. While Del Rio has denied these allegations, another case involving Del Rio has given credit to uh, Paige's story. 
Uh, Del Rio. Okay, I yes. tell you what, dude. Even though I missed the first part of this, you could have saved time by just showing me this dude's picture. Yeah. And dude, been like, hey, Paul, guess rough. what this guy done did? Not have been like, <laughs> some kind of sex crime. He done uh, did Del Rio a sex crime. A- Del Rio was arrested on May 9th, 2020, uh, and was charged with one count of aggravated kidnapping and four counts of sexual assault. Mm -hmm. Uh, His girlfriend's name is withheld. Del Rio broke his girlfriend's phone, laptop, and attempted to burn her passport. He then took her downstairs where he forced her to dance for him. Uh, He then proceeded to tie her hands with boxing straps and sexually assault her for 16 hours, inserting a variety of objects inside her. Uh, he shoved a sock in her mouth to keep her quiet and punched her in the face several times. Uh, he told her not to tell anyone or he would take her child away and uh, leave him on the side of the highway in the middle of nowhere. Police documented <sighs> multiple bruises, lacerations, and scratch marks. He was released from jail on fi- with $50,000 bond on May 10th, 2020, and now faces uh, up to life in prison for his crime. Uh, yeah. Fuck, dude. Probably the, the type of dude that you don't want uh, that doesn't have much hope of really reintegrating back into society. I mean, if you're violent enough to do that once, I don't know of any rehabilitation yeah. that can I mean, force this is you like, into it. You have 16 hours to like reconsider what you're fucking doing and just keep going. So, you know, this, you know, what it's this not like, reminds uh, me of the dude's not a fucking, um, he's not a, uh, a wrestler, but he's kind of like one. You guys remember that? Um, MMA dude that went by the machine. Um, he had no. this hot girlfriend Ooh. that was also famous. This was a big. This was big news back a couple of years ago. I think his nickname was the Machine, if I'm not mistaken. And they had like a big social media presence. They were like a big couple um, on social media and shit. And then he fucking like went ape shit on her one night she, they broke up and she was with some other dude and he went ape shit on her and beat the fuck out of her oh and war machine I, I, war I, machine I, I see it here war machine mm-hmm. yeah reminds me of that case a lot it's very similar like he threatened her beat the fuck out of her beat the fuck out of the dude she was with <clears throat> so here is a uh, jim Cornette talking about uh about what's happening with this case i guess back in october in her son or was it something like that well no besides the fact that he said if she if she said anything he would fucking drop her son off in the middle of the road somewhere or feed him to a street gang or whatever but besides that no he is alleged to have assaulted not only choked her out not only punched her or pummeled her about the head and face for a while sexually assaulted her with a variety of objects was the quote over a period from 10 o'clock at night to 2 o'clock next afternoon. Nobody gets that mad or that horny if they're in a right frame of mind and not chemically altered. So he's got big issues. This is, this is a guy that has issues for the wrestling business. And imagine most of the people in the wrestling business don't just have issues. They got subscriptions. This guy is at the head of the list right now. I don't see how he will ever. I mean, you know, some, no, I shouldn't say that. Some goddamn jack off. Like they ran the big fucking convention of mud show goofs this past weekend in Indianapolis. Cause Indiana had Pence being a former governor. You can imagine they've got like five times the fucking COVID cases that Kentucky does right next to them. Um, and they don't give a shit whether people die or not up there. But some trash like that, if this guy does, if Del Rio does ever get out of jail or get out of this, they would book him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like sexually assaulted and, and, uh, and almost killed someone for 16 hours. You're hired. Dude, you got to love your new cornet. Your new gimmick is you're the sex offender, you know, and yep. your finishing move is the cock block. And it's like, well, Jesus. Yeah, uh, yeah that's 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 not good, man. So this guy, once again, was uh, Paul, I know you missed the beginning of this. This guy was not some he was not a minor. Re- this dude was like champion and shit, like four time champion, um, fucking uh, money in the bank winner, Royal Rumble winner. Stu is fucking huge in the in the company. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna bend. Kind of surprising. Dude. This is not a bigger story than it is. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna bend him. He's gonna be erased. Oh yeah, yeah he, he probably already has. Been. Yeah, probably so. I would imagine. 
So uh, not quite as crazy, but I thought you might guys want to know what uh, what Ted DiBiase is up to. Million dollar man, well, Ted I know he's DiBiase. Rent. He's fine. He's this fine. is a guy I know here. This is this is my era of wrestling right at the beginning. Ted DiBiase, yeah. the million dollar man, and his manservant Virgil were, you know, a couple of the best heels in wrestling. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he's one of the most notorious heel characters of all time. Feuded with the likes of Hulk Hogan, Dusty Rhodes, Jake Roberts, whole bunch of fucking huge Everybody. names from the fucking eighties. Yeah, he's have ravishing uh, Rick Rude on his payroll for a while. I remember that. Here he is uh, doing a little promo because it's kind of fun to watch these guys pro- do promos. In my life, Razor Ramon, have I been embarrassed and humiliated the way I was on national television? Not by that punk kid, the one, two, three kid. No, it wasn't him. I had that under control. It was you, Razor Ramon. You and your Mr. Machismo coming down and sticking your nose in my business. Well, I've had time now. The match is signed. It's sealed. And I've had time to formulate this plan. Formulate the way that I'm going to make you pay. You think the $10,000 that kid took off of you was some money? That doesn't even scratch the surface of what it's going to cost you for embarrassing me. There this you go. Ba- the, dude, this is from the era back when they used to know how to make a heel. Yeah. They don't got to be complex and crazy and shit. This guy's whole thing was like, I'll do anything for fucking money and everything I care about is money and I'll kill a person right on fucking ring for money and money, 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 money. <laughs> like that's what he came out to, right? <laughs> yeah. He came and he out- would fucking, uh, yeah, and he would fucking uh, buy people and shit. He just like pay, throw his money around to fuck kick this person's ass for me. You know, here's money. You know, and he just buy people and fucking bribe his. You know, he just do anything. He was just a greedy fucking evil cocksucker. You yeah, know? pretty so, simple. Pretty simple stuff. Apparently, not too far from the truth. Uh, after years of wrestling in 1999, DiBiase founded the Heart of David Ministry and became a minister. Aww. He travels the world speaking at churches, camps, and conferences. Yeah. So here he is preaching. This He's is a it. preacher man. Let's get a little bit deeper into Life this. Life changed forever. I found myself moving to a very small town in Wilcox in Arizona called Wilcox, a little place that has three traffic lights. Wow. And I've got these big dreams. My mother falls into a- alcoholism. I remember hearing my mother say things like, I just wish I'd die, I wish you were dead. I have nothing to live for anymore. When all my friends found out that uh, I had these lofty dreams of college and professional athletics, I got laughed at and ridiculed. Hey, Ted, take a look around you, man. It ain't gonna and then for here. like this fucking eight town. years, I played a millionaire the that had a black man have, servant. A very young man. It was pretty fucking awesome, and I made a lot of money, but for some reason, that's going to be bad, and that's going to be the reason why I'm here in front of you today. So, well, recently, recently, Paul, Ted DiBiase has been subject of the uh, largest embezzlement scandal (laughs) in Mississippi state history. Damn. Uh, Brett DiBiase, (laughs) who's Ted DiBiase's son, was arrested due to the conspiracy. Uh, he was given funds to go to a drug treatment in Malibu that was actually intended for Mississippi's welfare programs. Uh, according to the report, DiBiase was allegedly given money for teaching classes he did not do. We actually kind of covered this, uh, I think, in like a yeah. one of our flash frieds or something very briefly. Uh, Ted DiBiase's nonprofit organization, Heart of David Ministries, has reportedly received $5,000 in grants in 2013, but brought in... Uh, $271,000 in welfare cash. Brett DiBiase was hired as a senior official at the Mississippi Department of Human Services. During that time, DiBiase's group received as much as $900,000 in one year. Heart of David Ministries spent $2.1 million from May 2017 to 2020 uh, while they were receiving money from the state of Mississippi. It's reported that 98% of welfare requests were turned down by the state. The audits, so basically, instead of giving it to poor people like it was supposed to be earmarked for, they gave it to te- fucking Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man. Uh, so, like I said, not too far from his character. Damn, it wasn't, he, was. he wasn't he wasn't playing a fucking character. He really is all about really, that money. Well, that's why he was so good at it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You know? 
to which you know. The audit's formal well, finding is that over $94 million of grant money has been questioned, meaning auditors either saw clear misspending or could not verify the money had been lawfully spent. Basically, Ted DiBiase and his family used the church organization to receive over $2 million in federal anti-poverty funds, which were intended to assist needy families. Instead, a state audit found that the funds were paid for work that allegedly did little or nothing to help the poor, uh, as reported by the New York Times. Shocking. It's a... So Ted DiBiase so, was tired of not actually being the million dollar man. I here's his house and shit. Uh, <laughs> while Ted DiBiase has uh, not been arrested or charged with anything yet, he uh, has listed his home in Madison, Mississippi for $1.5 million amid the scandal. Federal authorities are currently trying to seize the home of Ted DiBiase Jr., who was also involved in the scandal. Ted DiBiase uh, looks a little fucked up now. Look at that picture of yeah. him. Yeah, he ain't looking too good. He looks a little swollen and weird. Now. Yeah. So here's a news story. Damn, look at John Davis. That's right, investigators call this the largest public embezzlement case in state history. A Hines County grand jury indicted John Davis, who stepped down seven months ago as head of the Department of Human Services, and five other people on multiple counts included embezzlement, fraud, and mail fraud. Among those also facing charges, Nancy New and her son, Zach New, of New Summit School in Jackson, and former wrestler, Brett DiBiase. Speaking at a Thursday news conference, State Auditor Chad White, Chad White and Hines County DA Jody Owen said the group conspired to illegally obtain millions of dollars in public funds. They allegedly stole money from TANF, that's the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families. Dollars from that program were supposed to be used to serve some of the state's poorest residents. Those families, you say... I yeah, so basically he stole from the poor people. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? God fucking damn, these wrestlers have some fucked up lives after they leave. Like, I, well, I, I like that. I like what uh, Jim Cornette <laughs> said in that last clip we played a minute ago. Wrestlers don't have issues. They have subscriptions. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You, know, you ain't kidding. Pretty this is true. another example. Um, so how about we already know this guy's dead, but you might there might be some stuff here that might surprise you about Mr. Ultimate Warrior here. Does it involve whether or not he could indeed cut glass with those nips. I think the answer is yes. <laughs> um, There's actually a pay-per-view where he does that, Paul. I is there really? It. I missed that one. Damn. <laughs> what a shame. Yeah. You ever saw Glass Cutter 20 fucking... <laughs> no. uh, sorry, glass Cutter match. You could, uh, uh, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> while the Ultimate Warrior, real name James Bryan Helwig... Uh, may not have been the best wrestler or the best promo. He's one of the most electrifying entertainers in WWE history. Uh, during his career, he was WWE champion and two-time Intercontinental champion. Super popular fucking wrestler. Uh, came out. Oh, yeah. the, the thing that I remember about him is his insane energy level. He fucking came out there with a crazy level of fucking energy that was pretty much unmatchable. He promoted with that same energy, too. He had this insane kind of like person that's gone out of their mind but is also a warrior transported from another time. You know what I mean? kind of vibe about him if that makes any sense he was a yeah. um yeah dude total fucking badass back in the day i mean just look at this fucking this dude's crazy physique i mean that is dude, he was, he was so, so over fucking cut dude it's dude, crazy ultimate warrior was so over that uh, i think it was like wrestlemania was like four or five that he actually beat hogan i mean like he had insane popularity oh back yeah in yeah back in the day he was he was right up there with like randy savage and hogan at the top of the heap for people's favorite wrestlers um and deservedly so he was badass he kind of walked that line between heel and face too in a way that not a lot yeah. of wrestlers did a little bit more of a shade of gray maybe yep um, after retiring tiring from uh, wrestling in 1998, after his Halloween Havoc match with Hulk Hogan, which many consider to be the worst one of the worst wrestling matches of all time, uh, the Ultimate Warrior began a uh, conservative uh, as a conservative conservative uh, motivational speaker. His speeches denounced left wing politics and were usually filled with blatant homophobia and sprinkles of racism. So here is him uh, talking about uh, homosexuals here. Nothing. Subject to moral relativity is left out between these two extremes. That the bum is as legitimate as the businessman. That homosexuals, oh, homosexuality, oh, you don't have an orgasm on me, honey. <laughs> Let me come 
on off my politically correct horse. <laughs> are as legitimate as heterosexuals? How are they not? That the anarchists? Because queering doesn't make the world work. <laughs> queering doesn't make the... What a great argument. Queering doesn't make the world work. Oh, well, <laughs> shit. Pwned, I guess, huh? <laughs> it's destroyed. Well, um, the, uh, he just kept cutting kind of basically the same promos as he did when he was in face paint pretending to be an insane guy from the future or the past well, or whatever. Apparently he wasn't, apparently he wasn't pretending, so yeah. it's not the insanity part. Um, he was less he homophobic, though, back then, openly yeah. at least. Yeah. So that's nice. Uh, he made several comments on historical figures like Martin Luther King Jr. stating Martin marched a few times from Selma, Alabama to Montgomery, Alabama. It's about 40 miles and he walked along paved roads with security escorts and modern comforts and conveniences. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. And, yeah, you know, <laughs> and what, uh, what about the rest of the movement that he led the bus uh, sit ins and the fucking uh, bus boycotts and the goddamn. Oh, no, here's like, what, what else he said. Everything he said, else uh, that he did. He also said he preached proper righteous behavior while he at the same time committed adultery many publicly verifiable times. Oh, and he had a dream. <laughs> in quotes. Who didn't? Who um, fucking cares what he did? In, in like, did the religious tinged messaging of fucking Martin Luther King is completely overshadowed by the social upheaval messaging of it? So who cares who he's fucking? What a prude. How does a dude that looks like you with fucking pink face paint all over his face and nipples poking out that look like they could cut glass at a fucking S and M munch end up like the most prudish stuck up fucking stick in the mud ever. You dumb bitch. Well, he's so dead in, now, uh, so whatever. Yeah, in 2005, uh, WWE actually put out a DVD called the uh, about the Ultimate Warrior called "The Self Destruction of the Ultimate Warrior." <laughs> Clearly, the DVD featured many insulting commentaries from over a dozen former and current wrestling wrestlers insulting his matches, his career, and his overall attitude towards the wrestling business. I mean, that seems kind of shitty for no reason. It is kind of mean. Uh, originally, Warrior was asked to be a part of the DVD, uh, asked to be a part of the DVD, but he didn't want to do it because he didn't want to make TV, uh, WWE any money. This DVD is considered to be the only burial DVD ever produced by WWE. So basically, this is the only time they've ever put out a DVD attacking a former superstar. Um, in January of 2016, I'm sorry, of 2006, Ultimate Warrior filed a lawsuit against WWE where it remained in legal hell until September 18th, 2009, when the case was ultimately dismissed. So here is uh, Jim Ross on that DVD. Brought to you by Save 2005, because the WWE releases a DVD focusing on the Warrior, but it's not a puff piece. It's called the Self Destruction. Salting. Something with it. What's the thinking here? See what it was. We thought that that DVD would sell. This is actually it, him it talking was a about it. Telling story uh, of, uh, of of this guy, this guy that a lot of folks the little Conrads of the world would never have known. So, uh, yeah, no, I think it was just a, simply a matter of monetizing the tape, tape library, uh, creating new money and, uh, letting guys uh, express themselves. But the content was compelling enough in that era that, uh, the documentary style tell all, which now, uh, it's, it's, you know, look at what the, yeah, but it's kind of weird that WDB would do that because they've never done that to anybody else. Well, like, from the, I, I've never seen the DVD in question um, or any clips from it or whatever, but the way you described it where they like kind of like pooped on his matches or his ability in the ring, like there was no disputing his dominance. He was a really great ring performer and a really energetic presence, and people fucking loved him. Um, I actually got to see the Warrior live. Uh, a couple of times, the Selland Arena in Fresno was a popular kind of rotational. Hey, the fucking WWF is coming. This is back when it was the WWF. WWF coming to town or whatever. And my grandpa was into it, and he would get me and him tickets. And uh, I got to see the Warrior a couple of times. I actually got to see the Royal Rumble, which was probably the coolest thing I ever saw. Back in these days, too. I got to see, like, the... Uh, oh, yeah. I yeah, tried to awesome, figure man. it, and I think it's the 88 or 89 Rumble was in Fresno uh, the, at the Selland Arena, and it was cool. He was a great performer, so 
like what basically happens, what it sounds like is Vince went around all these guys and were like, Hey, I want you to dump on the fucking ultimate warrior or, or you're in trouble or whatever, basically whatever the Vince <laughs> version of that is. And he got him saying a bunch of fucking nasty things about a dude. Like maybe he was an asshole to work with, but like to deny that he was like talented in the ring and over with the audience and shit is kind of stupid. So in uh, 2013, uh, the warrior made up with the company. Uh, they wanted really? to pay him some, yeah, they wanted to make, pay him some big likeness, uh, some money for his likeness to be used in the WWE video game. Uh, uh, so he, he did make amends, but shortly after the ultimate warrior died of a heart attack on April 8th, 2014, he was inducted into the WWE hall of fame, uh, on April 5th. He attended WrestleMania on April 6th, appeared on Monday night raw on April 7th. And then he died on April 8th. So it was like this big last run. He basically, he did his big speech on raw and then the next day he was fucking dead, which was pretty crazy. Yeah, it was. I remember that. Uh, Warriors colleague said he appeared frail during WrestleMania weekend and said he was sweating profusely and breathing heavily backstage. So he was not in great health, apparently. Um, damn. Well, a lot of steroids were used, uh, back in his day. So I think he died of homophobia. Um, you guys remember this dude? Thank Draz. God, no. Hey, can you take him off the stage? Can we Draz. skip this one? <laughs> no. I don't want to know this dude. This is a guy that no, I would give dude. a wide berth anywhere I saw him in the world. This guy was uh, he was a pretty big dude back in the 90s uh, during the Attitude Era. This was uh, Draz. Draz. I, I, I don't know. I watched, Draz, I watched wrestling back in the day. Not a lot, but I don't remember no Draz. I don't remember this dork. Well, he was only in there for about a year. Um, he was uh, sort of like a jackass type of heel. Like, you know, he was, um, <laughs> he had a, if you, you remember uh, Prince Albert? Yeah. Prince yeah, Albert yeah. was his uh, was his tattoo artist. He also had a dude named Key who was his dealer. So these okay. guys were like kind of just like a bunch of tattooed up <laughs> douchebags and shit. And they were, all, they were all pretty douchey like this guy. I mean, they really were. Um, um here well, i'll give you a fucking little little taste of that i guess what a gimmick this is uh this is a a clip from a sh some draws's world shit i don't this know what the a fuck. Pro, we'll a promo problem this basically is the story of one man his wild pet a couple of tattoos and cute it's draws's world uh, yeah draws's world what up, y'all? I'm Draz. Welcome to Draz's world. Come on in. How yeah. Are you yeah, I just hey, walked out of the fucking snake. Got a bunch of snakes. Boy, it doesn't get much prettier than this, does it? <laughs> well, you never know when some freaky big haired Jersey girl's gonna show up, man. Just, ooh, a bit of, oh, kids, don't try this at home. Next time. Okay. So Next there's Draz. I got um, a gun. <laughs> I got a house. I can puke. It's Strauss's world. You know how it is. Why did he puke? Yeah. I'm so confused, but whatever. I don't know. I think, part of his I, think, I, think, I think his gimmick involved him puking sometimes. I don't uh, know what this match is for, but whatever. You, can, I'm not going to play part of a match. Um, but uh, he, uh, on October 5th, 1999, Draws was paralyzed after a match with D'Lo Brown. Draws stated that his shirt was loose during the match, and when Brown went for his signature powerbomb, he was not able to obtain a, pow a proper grip. Darren landed on his head and uh, fractured uh, oh. two vertebrae. Darren, is Dr his real name is Darren uh, Drozdov. Uh, Darren landed on his head uh, and fractured two vertebrae in his neck. He was immediately rushed to Nassau County Medical Center, where he underwent hours of surgery to reduce and stabilize the pressure from his uh, injured neck. Because the match was pre-taped, it was not aired uh, to fans on the October 7th broadcast and has never been shown to the public. His injury initially left him quadriplegic with no movement before the neck. Uh, Draws has since regained movement in his upper body and arms. If Draws could not execute the maneuver well enough, could not feed up for Dila well enough, then it's on him. If it was... Uh, a mistake and, and draws just couldn't get up for there was bad timing or something like that and, and Dilo just dropped him on his head then that's on Dilo. Uh, so you, but you just don't really know whose fault it was because I mean I've taken that running power bomb from Dilo and I got up just fine and he ran with me just fine for us so I, I've seen him do it before many many times you know 
So, oh um, shit, he's been saying Straz's fault. It's like Draws did it uh, to himself. So basically, Darren and D'Lo though uh, apparently hold um, no animosity towards one another for this uh, incident, um, and are in fact friends to this day. They both refuse to blame each other from the ac- accident, and both actually uh, both actually claim the blame for themselves. Uh, here's Carrie Saturn. Uh, this guy is the last guy we're going to talk about. I don't really remember this guy, but his story is I. funny. His story is funny enough that it seems like it's worth kind of getting into. Perry Saturn. S- Perry he sounds familiar. Saturn. He looks familiar. What era was he from? So apparently he was, um, he was a guy that, uh, okay. So Perry Arthur Sat- Satulo, AKA Perry Saturn was a professional wrestler, worked for ECW, WCW, TNA, and uh, WWF slash WWE. Apparently, this is like 90s shit. So he's like a jobber okay. guy in the 90s, basically. He was a former Army Ranger that was uh, trained in the art of wrestling by Killer Kowalski. Um, after a match where he attacked a jobber named Mike Bell, the uh, WWE changed his gimmick from being a badass to being a dullard who is sexually attracted to a mop called Moppy. <laughs> 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 Come on. So, dude. Basically, they had his his character was this fucking badass character. But then he fucking <laughs> he did something Vince didn't like. And Vince is like, all right, your new gimmick is oh. you're a retard and you're in love with a mop. <laughs> dude. As Tropic Thunder taught us. Dude, go full I gotta retard, tell you dude. what. Vince McMahon is one of the most lovably hateable persons that have ever existed on the planet, dude. There are so many ra- reasons to genuinely fucking despise Vince McMahon for ruining the company and shit. But this type of shit right here is fucking hilarious to me. The, the, the fact that he didn't punish this dude by firing him, but literally turning him into a cross-eyed fucking teller who's in love with a mop. What's the mop's name? Oh, the mop's name is Moppy. Moppy. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I love you, Moppy. <laughs> oh man. I can't, dude, if he had any self-respect, he'd have been like, "Fuck this, I'm out." You, you, I mean, like, I cannot believe he actually. This, oh, he did, I cannot no, believe he uh, actually dude. posed with a mop. He posed he, with this fuck. Oh. Vince told him he had to spend his time in purgatory, so, dude. Here. Incident that got him in trouble to begin with. Uh, we three thirty five. This guy is just a jobber, and um, you can actually hear. I think at some point, just like totally put this guy's life in danger and shit. Hip toss, the hip toss up and over, and uh, Saturn rolling on his shoulder. Wait a minute, boy, you're talking about Saturn opening up on Mike Bell, and here it goes. Wow, you don't want to make Saturn. Oh man! Oh, oh fuck! What the mm. fuck, dude? He didn't throw him right. Uh, God, I mean, no. he, it didn't look like he set him up for that at all. Oh, no, that's fucking horrible. I don't even, I don't dude, even really landed know. so bad. Um, okay, so at 335, uh, Terry Runnels yells, you're going to kill him. Terry dropped character as she was Saturn's in-ring girlfriend. So she drops character because this guy is fucking going nuts on this fucking dude who's just a jobber. Well, then- a six-person tag team matchup a little bit later on. Saturn definitely showing him, uh, showing Mike Bell that Shivery may not be dead in his match as well, but really showing that uh, once it's, you get the ring, bruised at is. least. Man. Well, I know Terry is enjoying the antics of Perry Saturn. Hook the leg, too, and Mike Bell, with great intestinal fortitude, kicks. She's basically like, come on, just finish this fucking match, dude. Yeah. Dude, it's a fucking... bullshit match, anyways. So, uh, we got Steve Austin talking about the incident as well. You know, it's funny. I was just watching a uh, a video on Perry Saturn, and he was working with a guy, Mike Bell, way back in the day. And Mike dropped him on his head a few times, and Perry kind of went off and throttled him. He apologized for it and owned up to it. Uh, but that was a case of a guy botching some moves, and Perry kind of lost his temper. And I hope Perry's doing well. I know he's not in a, in a great place right now, but I just saw the video on YouTube. But, man, I tell you what, when a guy is out there and he, and he fucks up or he messes up, you know, it's one thing when you get a potato and you send a receipt back. But if a guy just continually botches stuff, it's time to go home. You know, I did it in a few matches when I was uh, early in my career. 
uh, because I don't hear very well. I couldn't hear the guy's call, so I'd fuck up high spots and, and mess shit up. Not intentionally, and luckily I was working with, you know, very savvy, you know, veterans who were patient with me, and they weren't going to try to whip my ass because I was in pretty good shape. But it was time to go home, or they'd just get on all offense, and I would sell, and then we'd go home. But no, it doesn't give you license. It doesn't give you uh, any permission to just throttle a guy. So basically, they were saying this jobber fucked up some spots because he's fucking, he's just a jobber. He's no fucking good. And Perry Saturn gets pissed at this guy for missing some spots and just starts intentionally beating the shit. What did what did uh, what did Steve say? It's it's one thing to get a potato and mail it back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. No, no wrestling I, talk. So I don't know. I <laughs> mean, I, you can kind of infer what it means. It's like you know, a dude serves you up, serves you up a piece of shit. You know what I mean? And then you show you give him a little bit back because you you get hurt if somebody fucks up a move. That's the idea. Right, sure. And so it's like a way of letting the guy know in the ring, like you give him a little bit rough of rough stuff, like don't fuck up that spot again because we got another one of those coming up. And he's saying there's a difference between doing that and just wailing on a dude for no reason and so, beating him and trying uh, to hurt him. After they turned Perry Saturn into a dummy who fucking is in love with a mop, some fans actually liked the gimmick and thought it was funny, but his career went seriously downhill uh, in 2002. When the WWF slash WWE decided to uh, have a famous, the famous brand split between Raw and SmackDown, he was the 58th and last pick in the overall draft. In April of 2004, Perry was driving his girlfriend to work in Atlanta uh, when he saw two men raping a woman. Perry jumped out of his car and began to attack the two men. Uh, he was then uh, shot in the back of the neck and in the shoulder with a 25 caliber handgun. Uh, after the incident, Perry uh, Saturn was in a great amount of pain and became addicted to methamphetamine to ease that pain. After becoming oh. addicted to meth, he became homeless. Uh, his family and friends didn't know where he was or even if he was alive for uh, in you know in uh, 2010 when he reemerged, uh, having uh, given up his addiction to uh, crack. Uh, he wrestled on the Indies from 2011 to 2013 in random matches. Hasn't done any wrestling since then. A few okay, years later, okay, he also. Okay, okay. Yes, Fuck yeah. this guy. What happened to Moppy? How's Moppy doing? Uh, Moppy Is he still died. With Moppy? <laughs> Moppy died cold and alone, Paul. I mean, yeah, I'm assuming Moppy was the cold girlfriend he was driving around closet. with. You know, when he was in the car. <laughs> were the guys that he that he saw raping a woman just two janitors that were mopping something? Up? <laughs> yeah, he's like, so leave me alone. <laughs> uh, so, uh, after a few years, he revealed he was uh, dealing with traumatic brain injuries, which had limited his ability. He, That's uh, shown, right. he started showing signs of dementia, started losing his memory. Uh, In uh, 2017, he had a GoFundMe where he raised about $40,000. Um, he shared it on his Facebook account saying, hey, guys, it's Perry Saturn. I haven't spoken to anybody in a while. I've been dealing with health issues. I'm sick. Now I've got a really bad flu. That's it. Uh, guys, you've seen me fall to the bottom. I'm done. In a week or two, I'll be homeless. I have nothing left. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to struggle. I don't want to become homeless. I'm scared. I'm terrified. I don't know where my next meal is going to come from. I know I've asked so much from everybody, but if you could please help me and give me, uh, give my GoFundMe account. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to do. Uh, so you got 40 grand, you got 40 grand out of that. Um, so this is an interview with him from 2018, I guess. See how he's doing now. I guess he's at some kind of convention here. So Here I am once again at FanFest with an old friend, Perry Saturn. Got a face tattoo in the meantime. That's what he spent the 40 grand on. He yeah. fucking like, give me a face tattoo. <laughs> How you doing, Lay? Everything good? I'm, I'm well. He I'm well. Like I gotta Perry let you Saturn's know that if you... grandpa. He does. Yeah. He doesn't even look like the same dude anymore. Yeah. No. I mean, like, just go from... Like, this is only, like, 20 intervening years or so, right? So, right. like, this is him. I don't know. We'll fucking show him when he was, like, big and shit. Now here. Yeah. I mean, it's... A few minutes ago, I seen your cameraman do a reach angle just to grab a woman. Keep an eye on him. I, I, I'll do that. <laughs> or I'll have to attack him and get shot in the head again. <laughs> just a joke, folks. This is the Me Too era. Yeah, it's just a joke. No, me... <laughs> Anyway, we go back a long way. I used to see you when you were on your way to Kilikowalski's school. When you, when I was walking my dog, you'd be. 
Hey, he seems like he's doing okay. <laughs> he could be worse. I mean, if he's still uh, able to fucking like sitting sit around and... at conventions and fucking signing autographs yeah. and shit. If you can still sit around and have a totally inane conversation, I guess you got an okay quality of life. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm making sit around here, guys. Sit around with your face tattoo and go, ah, hey guys, it's me, Perry Tatter. Remember me? I used to fuck a mop. Anyway, here's an autograph. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> It's, it's me, something, man. It's Perry Mop Fucker Saturn. I'll sign anything you got for a hit of meth. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, folks. Uh, uh, that's that's pretty fucked up. I mean, I, that that story that you told about him, because like, here's the thing: one typically does not just be rolling around the street and then see two men raping a woman. That's not like, so I thought there was another shoe was going to drop and like, uh, it turns out that whole story was made up and it was a drug deal he was involved in. But no, that's actually true. He saw a chick getting raped. I mean, you know, I mean, I can't, I don't know for sure that it's true. I mean, he could have just gotten shot some other way and made up some fucking valorous story about saving some fucking chick from getting raped. Cause like, yeah, I've never been I mean, just I driving around. If that's, town if that's the like common, on there? Is I, a rape going on there. What the hell? <laughs> Yeah, it's it just it just sounded so fantastical that I thought a shoe was gonna drop about that being bullshit. But um, yeah, if that's true, that fucking yeah, sucks, not, dude. I cannot believe these TJ like wrestlers are a special breed, man. Because none of them had boring lives after wrestling. They might not have been successful lives, but none of them have had boring lives. I will say that. Well, you know, I don't know that all of them have these kind of crazy stories. I mean, obviously, there's even there's like Chris Benoit's and shit that even get crazier than this. But everyone knows that fucking story. Yeah. Did not we cover a whole thing about like wrestlers that got away with murder one time or some shit, too? Uh, I think um, we did. Yeah. I know we covered Benoit on an episode. I remember we covered it briefly. Yeah. Yeah. These wrestlers, man, they get into some fucking hijinks. My they're man. a special breed, dude. <laughs> they they really do. Special they're the, they're the gladiators, kind of dude. The gladiators, when like we outlawed blood sports and like the fucking man versus tiger arena matches and shit, like that whole breed of people had nothing to do. And then all of a sudden, wrestling came along, and the people that still had that in their blood were like, oh, yeah, this. And then they got money and then <laughs> destroyed themselves with it, basically, is the story. Well, you know how it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much all I got for this one. I'm pretty sure there could be a sequel to this if people like it. Cool. Uh, so I liked it because there's some crazy know. motherfucking wrestlers out there. So just let us know if you like it, folks. Share it around. Doesn't hurt. I mean, unless it's a patron episode, in which case, don't share it around. Deep fat fight. Deep fat fight. Deep fat fight. Deep fat fight.